guys, like this is actually legitimately heavy. This is probably the most exciting thing for me like throughout the entire year, like this this is it. <laughs> so what I picked up here is that M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch and the M1 MacBook Pro 16 inch. Both of these specs wise are maxed out. So they both have uh, M1 Max chips and they both have 64 GB RAM as well as four terabytes. And also I got them in two different colors, black and silver. So we'll talk about the differences between these two. And then we also picked up this guy, which is the power adapter extension cable. And last but not least, the most exciting thing on the menu Mmm, Apple $20 polishing cloths. Comes in like legit packaging too. Right off the bat, I noticed that there was like a circle here. No idea what that's supposed to signify. Is this supposed to make it stand out? Uh, but there's a circle there. Mmm, okay, okay. The 14 inch itself is pretty heavy. Also feels a lot more angular, like not in like a bad way. It feels pretty hefty, pretty good as a pro machine. Let's put it to the side for a second. In terms of power brake, this is a 96 watt, and I think it's because I got the M1 Max chip. So the M1 Max comes with a 96 watt for the 14 inch model. And Apple actually gives you black Apple stickers. So fun fact, usually with the Pro lineups, Apple tends to give you black Apple stickers and you get the braided MagSafe cable. So I'm pretty sure you guys all know this, but yeah, we have MagSafe again this year. This cable is nice. I'm actually quite impressed with this cable. It feels really nice feels high quality. But yeah, that's about it. Now let's open this up. Definitely feels different. Mm. Oh man. Oh, this is this is nice. This feels it feels it, it feels hefty good. Ooh. So happy to see these ports. Let's go. <laughs> So on the bottom, you have like this MacBook Pro. It's pretty much like written into the actual aluminum. Uh, and then you have these rubber feet, which I actually don't mind at all. I love the squared off design. I, I'm really feeling it. All right, now let's quickly get into the 16 inch MacBook Pro in silver. Oh yeah, this is, this is quite a bit heavier. This feels so light compared to this now. Okay, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what it is, I'm really feeling the silver color. I'm usually like an all matte black, like everything black person. I would have usually gone with this black one. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below which one you think actually looks better. And now with this one, you get a slightly bigger power brick. That's one of the main differences between the 16 and the 14. When you get the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, you're getting the 140 watt USB-C power adapter. Shape is different, as you can tell. Uh, this thing is longer, but I mean, width-wise, it's slightly narrower, but it's like almost the same size. So basically, it just has a little bit of more added height over there. Thickness-wise, it looks about the same thickness, so no real difference there. So this feels legitimately thicker and bigger than the previous MacBook Pros, no doubt about that. Uh, but honestly, I'll take that any day uh, in order to get this kind of performance as well as all these ports and everything back. This really reminds me of like the olden power books. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why I went with the silver because it's just so reminiscent of that time. So color wise, I like both of them quite a bit. The black does look clean. I will say that the black looks very elegant. This just looks classic Apple. It looks, um, yeah, very reminiscent of the past, which is why I think I'm gonna go with that. Another reason is on the inside. Once we open this up, you're gonna see that down here, we have a black, you know, anodized aluminum backing for where the keys sit. So this whole area is blacked out. So you can see how the silver looks here. Um, it's the black keyboard really does stand out quite a bit more. So I think for like, like when I'm filming top down shots or just looking at it, this looks nice to me. It, it's a nice dichotomy here. I just find that like the two contrasting colors here looks better. What, what about you guys? Let me know in the comment section down below, which color do you think is the color way to go for, even if you're not picking one up. Here's the thing, here's the reason why I'm kind of leaning towards the 16 inch this year compared to the 14 inch. Because for the last year and a half, I've been kind of using like the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro or the M1 MacBook Air, and then I kind of switched over to the iMac. To be quite honest, when I'm editing, on the go and that happens quite a bit for me where I'm editing from home and stuff because I got three kids. So when I you know, pack up from my studio and go back home, sometimes I gotta edit from home at night. And that having that smaller 13 inch screen did get annoying quite a bit because everything gets kind of shrunken down. You're looking at something a lot smaller. So with the 16 inch, it gives me a lot more real estate in order to have all my like, you know, my vectors and waveforms and all that stuff open for color grading. I can have my media uh, browser open. I can have the actual window, uh, you know, showing the clip as well as I can have my timeline at the bottom and information on the side. So I can fit everything on the screen and it just feels a lot more like 
usable or a lot more user friendly. I also do have the M1 uh, iPad Pro 12.9 inch. So that will kind of be like my bridge when I need something smaller just to get work done on the go. But this is gonna probably be my workhorse. Who should get the 14 inch basically? Well, for starters, somebody who is constantly on the go, constantly traveling, and you just need that smaller package, that smaller real estate, um, then yeah, I think the 14 inch is a great size. The 16 inch is for somebody who is gonna be working out of the studio more often but on those odd trips or anything like that where they need to take their laptop, they can. Like, I mean, it's still pretty portable. I'm not gonna say that it's not portable, but I mean, yeah, this is definitely, if you're traveling a lot, the 14 inch is definitely better. Also, while I'm editing this, I also thought I'd throw in here, I think the 14 inch is actually a great size for students and people that are actually commuting uh, to school or to work and they're gonna use it on the go. So whether you're pulling it out on like the train or the bus or subway, or even at school, if you're gonna take it out in your classrooms, then sometimes those like chairs that you're sitting in inside the lecture hall, they don't have that much space for you to use like a 16 inch. So in that case, I would definitely recommend going with the 14 inch. So I would actually say like majority of the people should probably get the 14 inch. That should be your baseline. As for the 16 inch, if you need a 16 inch, you already know you need a 16 inch and I kind of fall in that category. So I just needed more real estate and more space when I'm working uh, at home or not in the studio. So that's probably why I'm going with 16 inch. But yeah, I think the majority of the people should go with 14. Another difference between the 16 inch and the 14 inch is the fact that the 16 inch also has a high power mode, which apparently gives you slightly better performance compared to the 14 inch. Now the 16 inch M1 Max chip is the only one that's able to do that. And I think it's because of the larger body, which gives it better thermals, as well as the larger power brick, which is the 140 watt USB-C power adapter. Now, if you're actually interested in everything that's new with the MacBook Pros, I mean, I kind of covered it. Like it's all the ports, it's the new design, the shape, no touch bar, you get the much better screen, which is a Super Retina or Liquid Retina Pro XDR display screen. That's a mouthful, I, I don't even know if I said that right. But if you wanna know everything that's new again in more detail and you wanna know if it's worth it to even upgrade to these new laptops, I actually released a video just last week. I'm gonna link that up here, so go check that out. Okay, so I've talked about colors, I've talked about the two different sizes. Wait, hold on, I totally forgot. I was supposed to unbox um, these two things as well. Essentially, the reason why I got the power adapter extension cables, um, where's the power brick? So the usual power bricks, you kind of plug them into a wall like this, and I hate that. Like some of these wall outlets that I plug this into, this is just so heavy, so it kind of just falls down. Um, you know, it takes up more space. I just don't like it. So by having this and plug this in, and now, Boom, now you got something where you don't have to plug this into the wall. It gives you a longer cable as well. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, the polishing cloth. 